Hello ladies and gentlemen, scared 24 here bringing you another Minecraft World War 2 vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the SU-152. The SU-152 is a Soviet self-propelled heavy howitzer used during World War 2. It mounted a 152mm gun howitzer on the chassis of a KV-1S heavy tank. Later production used an IS tank chassis and was redesignated ISU-152. Because of this adopted role as an impromptu heavy tank destroyer capable of knocking out the heaviest German armored vehicles, Tiger and Panther tanks, and elephant tank destroyers, it was nicknamed uh, Zervoboy, uh, which uh, translates to Beast Slayer. Uh, so the SU-152 is um, again one of those uh, very interesting Soviet tank destroyers. Um, I personally find like the SU series ISU tanks to be actually pretty cool and pretty beastly of uh, tank destroyers that's for sure um and it also just shows you how you know influential just like or basically how simple soviet production is i should say uh since most of their vehicles were just based on the kv1 um is or uh, t34 tank chassis i mean they just made so many different variants and modifications to it uh just allowed it to for them to actually you know do what they did best and mass produce and basically launch an entire horde at um, an enemy position. Um, so overall, I really do like the SU's uh, series of tanks, and uh, the SU-152 uh, is by far no exception to it. Um, and of course, a 152mm gun, that's pretty dang deadly. I believe this could probably easily one-shot um, some of the heaviest German armor at the time, so pretty awesome stuff there. Um, this uh, tank itself, again, just an awesome design for it, and I believe it's a redesign. I don't think I've done one of these before, however, I did have one design on this world so i don't know if this is a redesign or not um but hopefully you guys uh do enjoy the new design if it is a new design um at that anyways uh going ahead and taking a look at the build um it's got that kind of standard tank destroyer look uh it's got that you know very low profile kind of uh i guess comparable to a uh, stug or something of that sort uh starting off with we have the main gun here as you can see it's already a lot beefier than uh some of the typical guns i do with being 100 uh 152 millimeter gun kind of have to make it uh pretty big like that uh we then have the you know i was gonna say turret but basically the gun box here i really don't know what you would call it so we just part, part of the hole where the crew would be uh seated it's got that low profile as i mentioned um and uh, lots of nice detail all the way around here optics on the top here um some various um little parts that stick up here and there and the hatches and everything like that so overall a whole lot of really nice detail going on for it we have a huge hatch on the back here, which I mentioned probably for the crew to get out and probably also for ammunition to be loaded into the tank because as you can imagine, they're going to need a pretty big door to get shells that big um, into the uh, tank. Uh, then on the back here, just got some pretty simple uh, detailing here with just, you know, the back um, engine, vents, all that kind of stuff. Uh, very similar to my um, KV-1S since it is based on the same kind of chassis as it. Um, overall though, that's pretty much uh, the SU-152. I think it's a very nice design and hope you guys do enjoy it. It's going to make an awesome addition to any Soviet's, uh, you know, defensive positions or anything of that sort. Uh, so anyways, hope you guys do enjoy the build. With that, let's go and move into the tutorial by start off. Hello ladies and gentlemen, scared 2 here bringing you another Minecraft World War II vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building the SU-152. The SU-152 is a Soviet self-propelled heavy howitzer used during World War II. It mounted a 152mm gun howitzer on the chassis of a KV-1S heavy tank. Later production used an IS tank chassis and was rede redesignated ISU-152. Uh, because of its adopted role as an impromptu heavy tank destroyer, capable of knocking out the heaviest German armored vehicles, Tiger and Panther tanks, and Elephant tank destroyers, it was nicknamed uh, Zero Boy, uh, which translates to Beast Slayer. Uh, it was in service from 1943 to 1954. Uh, There's an estimated 704 uh, units of these were built. And uh, the armor, it's uh, surprisingly doesn't have that great of armor, only 75 millimeters on the front side, 60 millimeter, and uh, the roof 20 millimeters. So definitely not that great of um, armor on this thing. Uh, but the gun definitely makes up for its offensive capabilities uh, with the 152mm main gun. Um, however, it's only got 20 rounds, so you got to definitely make those shots count. Um, anyways, uh, that's uh, pretty much uh, the vehicle and everything we're going to be building. Um, it's just an awesome vehicle. I really do like the SU series of tanks. I think it just shows the Soviet um, kind of doctrine really well that, you know, we build just a few tank chassis and be able to modify them 
and turn them into these entirely different tanks. And I know a lot of other nations did that throughout the war and everything, but the Soviets were more iconic for it because they used the T-34, the KV, and the IS chassis, and they were able to make so many different types of tanks to fit a bunch of uh, different roles. It's kind of crazy how much uh, they were able to just take that those few chassis and make it into something crazy like they did. Um, so very interesting and uh, very cool none, uh, nonetheless, and I uh, really do like the SU series of uh, tank destroyers. I think they're uh, really cool looking. Um, anyways, uh, the uh, SU-152, let's go ahead and take a look at it, and so we'll get into the tutorial shortly after. So, uh, starting off with, we have the main gun here, which is the 152mm, as I mentioned. Uh, pretty, you know, uh, big gun. Um, you can see it's a lot bigger than my typical tank turret. Uh, you know tank guns and stuff like that and you can definitely see in pictures this thing is a pretty uh, massive gun um, continuing on we have the um, Kind of the more whole portion here where the gun breach would be located ammo uh, storage and basically most of the crew uh, Located kind of in this area uh, right in there. Um, so nothing uh, Super crazy about it. Uh, there's also the driver's uh, viewport that would be located right here in this um, section as well uh, continuing on over here on the side, they're pretty much it's pretty much relatively close to the same on both sides besides some of the top detail which is a bit different. Um, and then going to the back here, it's got the same kind of back design as the um, KV-1S as this is based on the KV-1S uh, chassis. So it's uh, you know practically a KV-1S chassis and then uh, built on it. So it's kind of interesting because we do have a KV-1S tutorial that came out not too long ago. So uh, this will be a perfect addition to go with it. And um, some, you know, offensive, Soviet offensive, whatever that's involved in the KV-1S. Anyways, hope you guys do enjoy this design. Without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by starting off with our first layer, layer 1. Alright guys, moving on to our first layer, we're going to start off with layer 1. For layer 1, we want to go ahead and take our nether brick slabs. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of two nether brick slabs, followed by a row of two nether brick top slabs that comes off those two slabs. That's going to be the right side of the tracks here we're going to start with, and we'll go ahead and work our way over to the left side. But first, we're going to do the right side of the tracks, so just take that in mind. When you're building this thing, this is the right side. You're going to have about five blocks of space over here to the left you'll need to have open. Anyways, continuing on, we're going to place down a row two of green stained clay, followed by a stone button on the right side of this row two, so the right side was being the outside. We then want to place down a row two of dark oak wood stairs after that row two of green stained clay, followed by a second row of stairs right behind those. We're then going to place down a row two of green stained clay, again a stone button on the right side. We're going to repeat this uh, pattern one more time, or basically a few more times here with narrow brick stairs again back to back. A row of two of green stained clay with a stone button on the right side. Uh, two dark oak wood stairs and then two dark oak wood stairs right behind them. Just like that. So in total you should have uh, three rows of two of green stained clay. And three rows of these two dark oak wood, these two rows of dark oak wood stairs back to back like so. After you have that done we're going to place down a row of two of narrow brick slabs. Followed by a row of two of narrow brick top slabs. Come off those half slabs like so. After that's complete we're going to go ahead and go from this row of two of narrow brick uh, top slabs on the back here. We're going to place down a row of two of dark oak wood top slabs across. Like that uh, to kind of go across the middle. Going up to the front here, we're going to place down a row or two of uh, dark oak wood uh, t slabs. They're going to be top slabs coming off these narrow brick um, half slabs, just like that. After that's done, we're going to go and place down a dark oak wood fence gate right here, and also one right up here in the front. Again, this is the front side here, and this is the back side. Uh, we then want to take our dark oak wood top slabs, and we're just going to go and fill in the space in between these rows of three here on the bottom. So it's just going to create a nice base for the tank. And if you guys plan on doing some kind of interior, this will be so be the floor of your tank. So just fill it in like so. After we have that done, we're just going to go and take our, um, basically our blocks again and just build what we did on the air side there, just over to the left side. So it's the exact same thing, um, except the stone buns on the side of the green stained clay blocks are going to be on the left side now. Um, so we're just going to go and basically just build it as if we're doing the air side. If I'm going a little fast for you, just look back at the air side. It's exactly the same. Nothing's different. And... Just like that going back and then we just want to take our stone buttons place them all on the right side like so once we have that all finished we should get something that looks like this for the base of the tank and once you're um, good to go that's going to do it for layer one with that let's move on to layer two all right guys moving on to our next layer we have layer two for layer two what we want to do is we want to go and start off by taking our nether brick stairs we're going to place down two stairs on top of these nether brick top slabs same thing over here on the uh left side as well so on the right side and left side same thing there two nether brick stairs on top of those two nether brick top slabs after that, we're going to place down a dark oak wood corner stair, come off these stairs on both sides going toward the middle, and a dark oak wood slab in between those stairs in the very middle like so. We also want to go and place down a zombie head, come off those two uh, dark oak wood corner stairs so you get something that looks just like that from the front. After that's complete, we're going to go and take our green hardened stain clay, we're going to place down a row of seven that's going to go all the way across. We then want to go and place down a wooden trap door on both ends of this row of seven, just like that um, for the front um, wheel up here. 
Um, after that's complete, we're going to go ahead and take our green stain clay. We're going to place down a row of going, green stain clay going back from the second wheel. Uh, so for this, very simply, we're going to go and go to the second block. And we're just going to go ahead and go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Green stain clay blocks going back. It's the same thing right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Green stain clay blocks going back. If you guys don't care about interior, you guys can just fill this in. But if you guys want to try to fit some interior in, you're going to want to leave this space hollow. Um, along the sides here, we're going to go and take our, ner our uh, Nerbic top side. So we're going to place down a top side like this, followed by a dark oak upside on stair with an item frame and a green stained clay block in the item frame, like so, for our uh, wheels that run along the top of the tracks here. We're then going to place down two dark oak with top sabs, another upside down dark oak with stair facing the same direction as this one, with again a item frame and a green hardened stained clay block. We're going to place down two more uh, Nerbic top sabs, dark oak with upside down stair, again facing the same direction, a green stained clay block. And we just want to place down a narrow, narrow brick top set. We're going to go and do the same thing over here. Narrow brick top set going back. Dark oak with upside down stair, which faces this that direction right there. Green uh, item frame, green sink wave block. Two dark oak with top sabs. It's the same thing as the other side as well. I um, just thought I should throw that out there as well. And two narrow brick top sabs. Dark oak with upside down stair, narrow brick top sab. And just like that. So you should get something that looks just like that on both sides there. Pretty simple. After this row right here, we're going to go and take our green stain clay. We're going to place down a row of seven all the way across, followed by a stone button on both ends of the row of seven of green stain clay with an item frame over it like that. After that's complete right there, we're going to go and take our uh, narrow brick stairs. We're going to place down two narrow brick stairs on top of those two narrow brick top slabs, again, on both sides. And in between them, we're going to take our dark oak wood stairs and place down a row of three across. Um, we then want to go ahead and place down a brake light on the back here. Very simply by going to this dark oak wood stair to the left side, place down an item frame, a red stained glass block in the item frame, and a sign to go ahead and cover it up so you get something that looks just like that on the back. Once you guys have that all complete, that is going to do it for uh, layer two. And with that, let's move on to layer three. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer three. For layer three, we're going to start off by taking our green carpet. We're going to place down two green carpets on top of these two narrow brick stairs up here in the front for the fenders. After those two green carpets, we're going to place down two dark oak wood slabs going back on both sides like that. After that's done, we're also going to place down a narrow dark oak wood slab on both sides, going back like that. Um, when we get to this point here, we want to go ahead and start off on the right side. We're going to place down one, two, and three green stain clay blocks across, followed by a spruce wood plank, and then a narrow green stain clay block like that to bring it to the left side so you get something that looks like that. On this uh, spruce wood plank on the front, we're going to place down a stone button. And coming off these two, um, these two uh, green stain clay blocks, we're going to place down two dark oak wood top slabs like that, followed by a... Uh, wooden trap door come off the uh, dark oak wood slab here that's kind of come off the center so just like that for the front there after that's complete uh, we're gonna go and take our, uh, our dark oak wood stairs we're gonna place down a dark oak wood stair on both sides like so we then want to take our green hardened stain clay we're gonna place down one and two green stain clay blocks back same thing over here one and two green stain clay blocks back we're then gonna place down a dark oak wood stair on both sides like so followed by a dark uh dark oak wood half slab again on both sides with a row of five of green stain clay in between those dark oak wood half slabs if you guys are building a bit of an interior you can see you guys have plenty of space to really uh, put some kind of interior in here so uh, you guys can feel free to go crazy with that um, after that's uh, done right there we're gonna go and take our uh, green stain clay blocks we're gonna go, and go down the middle row right here we're gonna place down a row of one two and three green stain clay blocks going back like so uh, once we have that done, we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair, come off that row of three of green stain clay, and then a stone brick, um, or sorry, dark oak wood half slab on the very end here. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some stone brick stairs. We want to go ahead and place down a row of uh, three here of stone brick stairs, kind of facing the uh, row of three of green stain clay. Same thing on both sides there, so you get something that looks just like that. After that's done, we're going to go and grab, grab a spruce wood plank. We're going to place down a spruce wood plank on both ends of these rows of three of uh, dark oak, or, uh, stone brick uh, stairs and then we're going to place down dark oak wood slabs on the ends of those spruce wood planks um, after that's done we're going to go to the sides here the backs of the stairs we're going to place down a row of three of green stained clay on both sides going back we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair next to these spruce wood planks on both sides and come off this dark oak wood stairs we're going to place down a dark oak wood slab on both sides um, after that's done we want to go and then take a dark oak wood or uh, actually my bad we're going to take shulker boxes um, and we're going to go ahead and place down uh, one right here and we want to uh, place it down so it's facing that direction so the bottom's kind of facing toward the back and then come off this shulker box we're going to place down another one like that so you create like a little shape that looks something like that for these external fuel tanks and uh, we also want to go ahead and do the same thing right here so just like that 
and you want to make sure that they're kind of facing each other like that to make them look a little bit more uniform and kind of connected so something just like that really is what you guys want um, and then we're going to do the same thing over here on this side so just like this and you get something that kind of looks like that for uh, your fuel uh, fuel barrels on the side there uh, once that's done we're also going to go and grab ourselves a green carpet and we're going to place down green carpet on these uh, two uh, narrow brick stairs that are sticking out on the ends like that and once you guys have that all finished that's going to do it for layer three with that let's go ahead and move on to layer four Alrighty guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer 4. For layer 4, we're going to start off by taking our green hardened stained clay. We're going to place down a row of two green stained clay blocks on top of these two dark oak with top sabs. After we have that done, we're going to place down a stone button on the right side block, just like that, followed by a sign on the right side of the green stained clay block. So you get something that looks just like that, right there. After that's done, we're going to place down a green stained clay block that comes off this one on top of that wooden trap door. We also want to place down a sign on the side of this green stain clay block over here on the left side, just like that. Coming off this green stain clay block here, we're going to place down one, one and two mossy cobblestone walls, followed by a green stain clay block um, on the bottom and top of the green stain clay block. We're going to want to place down some wooden trap doors, or just on the bottom for right now. We're just going to place it down on the bottom. Uh, we're also going to place down signs here on the sides of this uh, green stain clay block. After that, we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair like this, followed by another dark oak wood stair that's going to be facing it, like so. And we also want to go ahead and run signs along the side of these stairs as well. Like that. And then on the back of this stair here, we're just going to place down a stone button, uh, just like that. And uh, that's going to kind of do it there for the barrel of your gun. Once that's complete there, uh, we want to go ahead and take our green stain clay blocks. We're going to go ahead and place down a uh, narrow row of two that's directly behind this one right here so narrow row of two that goes back like this we're gonna place down a mossy cobblestone wall over here on the right side and then two over here to the left side coming off this mossy cobblestone wall that's on the far right side we're gonna place down a item frame glass block in the item frame and a sign to cover it up like so for your uh, headlight um, after that's complete there we're gonna take our green stain clay we're gonna place down a row of five all the way across followed by a mossy cobblestone wall again on both sides after we have that done we're gonna place down a second mossy cobblestone wall back Green stain clay block on the inside here, mossy cobblestone wall, and green stain clay block on the inside. Um, then we're going to place down a green stain clay block uh, on both sides like that. We then want to place down a mossy cobblestone wall, followed by again a green stain clay block on the inside, mossy cobblestone wall, and green stain clay block on the inside. We're going to go back uh, one block from this green stain clay block, so one block back on both sides. Over here on the left side, we need to go ahead and grab ourselves spruce wood planks. We're going to place down a row of two spruce wood planks on the left side. And then one green stain clay block over the right side. So you have one green stain clay block, two spruce wood planks, and then two green stain clay blocks going over the right side. We're going to place down a stone bun on the spruce wood plank here. We also want to grab ourselves a zombie head and an end rod. We're going to place down a zombie head coming off the, the uh, second spruce wood plank. End rod uh, going to the right side and then an air zombie head on this uh, right uh, corner green stain clay block. Um, after that's done, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a spruce wood uh, half side. We're going to place it down top of this green stain clay block right here. And then we want to take some zombie heads and we're going to place down a zombie head here on top of these uh, stone brick stairs at about a 30 to 45 degree angle. Just make sure that they're about the same on both sides uh, like that. And once you guys have that done, that's going to do it for layer 4. With that, we're going to move on to our last final layers, which are basically going to be layers 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. We're going to put the top antenna on and basically the top of the, um, the hall and uh, finish this build off. So with that, let's move on to our last final layers. Alrighty guys, so moving on to our last final layers. For these layers, we're going to go and start off by taking our green stain, or green carpet. We're going to place down two green carpets on top of these two dark oak wood stairs um, up here in the front, just like that. After that's done, we're also going to place down a wooden trap door on top of this green stain clay block um, going back as well. We then want to go back to this green stain clay block connected to the mossy cobblestone walls. We're going to place down a, a uh, wooden trap door on top of it. We also want to place down two levers on top here. We're going to go ahead and flick them back like that and also fix the wooden trap door if it decides to go ahead and pop up. So just like that. Uh, we then want to place down a row of two of dark oak wood slabs where these um, levers are trying to connect up to. After we have that done, we're going to place down a green stain clay block that's going to be in the middle of this row of five right here. So green stain clay block in the middle with the stone button on top. Over to the right side, we're going to place down a dark oak wood slab, which is going to be followed by a mossy cobblestone wall. And then a dark oak wood fence post as well uh, to bring it over, off to the right side. Uh, going over to the left side, we're going to place down a zombie head like this next to the green stain clay block. And a dark oak wood slab that's going to be over here to the far left uh, side. 
Go ahead and go back from this. We're going to place down a dark oak wood slab back from this green stain quick block, followed by a spruce wood uh, half slab on both sides, and then a dark oak wood slab on both sides of those spruce wood slabs. Go ahead and continue on. We're going to place down a row of three of uh, these uh, dark oak wood half slabs across the middle. We will actually need to go ahead and fill in the space right here. So we're going to place down a green stain quick block in that space like that just to fill it in. And we're also going to place down a, a zombie head here on both sides just like that. After that's uh, finished up there, we're going to go ahead and continue on by placing down a uh, green stain clay block on the left side here. It's going to be coming off this dark oak wood slab, so a green stain clay block with a stone button on top. Uh, we're going to place down a dark oak wood slab to the left side. Over to the right side, we're going to place down a, um, we're going to place down a daylight sen sensor right here, followed by a dark oak wood slab and the second one off to the side like so. Uh, going back from this uh, this uh, green stink wood block, we're going to place down a spruce wood slab, followed by a uh, dark oak wood slab to the right side. We also want to go ahead and place down a zombie head on top of the spruce wood plank right here. Continuing on, we're going to place down a dark oak wood slab right next to the zombie head like so, and we're going to place down a zombie um, corner head, or a zombie head on the corner here at about a 45-ish degree angle. Once we have that done, that's pretty much the top of the, the uh, hole, I should say, complete, and the last thing for us to do is just put our antenna on. For this, we're going to take iron bars, go to this dark oak wood um, fence post, place down one, two, three, and four iron bars going up like that. And once you guys have that complete, that's going to do it for the SU-152 uh, Soviet self-propelled heavy howitzer. Hope you guys do enjoy this build, and it's a, a pretty nice addition to any of your uh, Soviets or, you know, any kind of World War II Eastern Front uh, mocks that you guys may be working on or whatever you guys are really doing with this tank. Anyways, hope you guys do enjoy the build. If you guys do end up using this design, I do actually think you guys can be proper credit for it. This main thing from the side of the build, tune to my channel or this video if this does appear on social media and networks. Just be sure to get proper credit for it. That's all I ask for when doing these tutorials. It helps my channel grow and it continues to keep me inspired to keep on posting these types of tutorials. So as long as you guys give me credit for it, you're free to use it for whatever projects you guys are working on. And that, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary2x4, and I'll see you guys next time.